The strings in GarageBand are one of my favorite instruments and they are super flexible, but there's a little bit of a learning curve to them. So what we're going to do here today is go through everything you need to know about the strings in GarageBand, but we're afraid to ask. To get to your strings here in GarageBand on iPhone or iPad, you simply need to start a new project and navigate to the strings. Now, you can just tap on strings here and it will take you straight into your chords mode where you can start playing chords and you can select all of the different uh, instruments we have here, your violins, your violas, your cellos and your basses, or you can actually individually select them. So this is a, probably the first and the coolest tip is if we want to just work on our basses, we can select bass and then if we tap and move up and down, that's how we actually bow. So, and the, the thing that probably the biggest learning curve that people have when they start using the strings is as you can see there, we'll see that dot, that's me tapping on there. And when I remove, that's when you get the sound. So a lot of folks are thinking, why is there so much delay with the strings? Well, it's because when you put your finger on there, when you grab your finger, just pretend this red dot's your finger, and you press, nothing happens. It's not until you actually move it that it does that. And to get the, uh, the pizzicato string sound, you tap and then release without actually moving it. Just like that. So... It, once you get the idea that it's not when you tap, it's when you release, you're going to find the strings a lot better. And I thought I'd put that up here on Front Street because that's the one thing that people ask me more than anything. They're like, the strings are always too laggy. And look, yep, some of the different string types are a little laggy. Like the cinematic one, it doesn't, doesn't come in straight away because there is, like strings naturally don't hit their peak volume. The attack of a regular instrument, a string instrument, is not straight away. It's not like a keyboard where it hits a hammer. It's actually the bow has to start its progress and then it has to complete it. So the other options we have with strings up in the top left here, you can tap on this one and you can go through your cinematic, your modern, your pop and your romantic. So uh, you can select each of these and they'll just have a different type of tone. There's your modern strings. You got your pop strings, which are a bit of a brighter tone. And then you've got your romantic strings, which are a little bit more subtle. So you can choose what type of strings that you want to go with there. Now, let's uh, let's go back to, you know what, I'll, I'll use the, the modern ones. Uh, you might have noticed there that there's custom as well. So if you've actually created, so I've got my own Pete strings here. Can't even remember what I did with those. But if you, if you create your own string presets, you can actually use that one as well. So you've got a couple of options here. You've got the chords and you've got notes. So we're there in chords mode. And this is where we've got the four quadrants down the bottom here. Middle. And top. So for each chord, you've got four different, basically, fingerings, <laughs> four different ways that they're actually going to be played. So four different inversions is the word I was looking for, not fingerings, uh, four different inversions of that. And you can play those across there. Like everything else, if you want to edit your chords, you can do so. So all of your instruments have an edit chord function. So if you go to the little little settings icon there, you can hit your edit chords and you can actually change what each of these chords are. If you wanted uh, this B diminished to be something really weird, like a B, um, B augmented. Oh, we're going the wrong way. <laughs> it's hard with the mouse sometimes. B augmented six. Well, it can't be a six because it's augmented. Uh, major seventh with a, with a C bass. You can have... Some of the weirdest uh, chords that you're ever going to find. So we'll hit done on that one. You can also, of course, change your key signature. And if you change your key signature here from, say, C major to D major, all of your chords will change to be in that key, uh, except for any custom chords you've created. It'll keep those. It'll just tweak them into, it'll basically transpose any custom chords up to the, uh, the key signature <laughs> that you put it into. So we'll go back to C major just to keep things simple. I love how it looks there. B plus major 7 C. <laughs> <laughs> Looks cool. So we've got everything selected here. The other thing you'll notice here in the chords mode is autoplay. So this works just like all of our other instruments. If you've ever used autoplay on a keyboard uh, or on guitar, you can just select the autoplay. And then if we tap... And uh, like some of our instruments, and someone actually reported to me that this isn't working anymore. So let's try it here now. If I tap with two fingers, I should get a different sound. That actually sounds the same. Let's tap with three fingers and see if we get a different sound. That's
that's odd. I thought that we used to have this. So for some of your instruments, you've actually got the four auto plays, but then you've also got uh, the variations where you go one finger, two finger, three finger, and it actually plays each different one. That's the easiest way to play. And if we wanted to record something in, uh, if we go back, we take auto play off again. If we wanted to record in some sounds here, why don't we start with just the basses and the cellos? So we'll start with... All right, so let's just record in, say, eight bars just to give us something to work around. So we'll hit the record button and we'll play a D minor. A little bit out of time there. Might need to uh, adjust some quantizing. So we'll go back to our track view here. And uh, yeah, so you can see there um, my timing's a little bit off there. But we'll just, we'll play around with this to start with. So the first thing we'll do is just make this an eight bar loop. Just so we've got a little bit more space to work with. Go with eight bars. And... Uh, And that is one of the hardest things that you'll find with strings is to get the timing of those uh, those starting bits right. So well, let's add some uh, pizzicato strings so that we can uh, see what that works like. So we'll add another track here and uh, you can either add here plus there and add it again. Or you can, of course, use the duplicate option. If you've already got it set up and you want to do something similar, tap on that one, hit duplicate. And we've got another string here. So we can then go in here and adjust it. So this time, uh, let's let's grab the top end, the violas and the second. And actually, just go violas and second violins. Yeah, but we'll, we'll do that. We'll just do some pizzicato strings like that. And remember, when you're tapping, it's not till you release that it's actually going to do it. And yeah, by their very nature, strings are going to feel that little bit lazy and it's hard if you're used to things being right on the grid and boom, right in the pocket. Yeah, it can feel a little bit clunky when you're, uh, when you're using something like this. But uh, it's coming together, so we'll loop that one and uh, pop that down like so. The other way to play strings. So once again, we'll duplicate this out here so that we can get another string track. And you can see you can start layering up your strings very nicely here. The other way to play your strings is rather than being here in your chords view is the next level one, which is the notes view. And yeah. Sounds like me when I tried to play the viola when I was a child. Not well. Uh, so here you'll notice you only get to choose one instrument because you're literally playing that instrument. And this is good if you're a, if you're a virtuoso like Dan Bacon and you actually know how to play the, uh, the violin then this would be pretty cool for you. For me, not so much, but just a few tips of how this all works here. So it's very similar in terms of how, how you play this. If you just tap and hold, this time it's when you actually hit the string that it actually starts. And you can see there that you've got your, your guide dots. The strings people will tell me what guide dots actually. Fret markers? No, I don't even know. <laughs> they don't have frets. You have a fretless instrument. So you can play there. To play an open string, you tap right down there. So right here across the bridge, I guess no that's the I don't know. across the, the the bar there that's going to be your open notes so if you're playing that now you do have the ability to hold down on this and again someone's going to tell me what that's actually called and if you hold that with one hand now you can actually play pizzicato so you can pluck the strings by tapping and holding and now it's when you release like so so when you release it is when it plays that string sound. So why don't we just try and play a little bit of a cello part to go with this. So I'm just gonna... So I play those same notes over and over again to show you deliberately, so that I can show you how easy it is to actually edit your notes here. So like every other MIDI instrument, the beautiful part about using the strings is that to edit, all you need to do is go in here, tap, and then hit the edit button. Or as we learned, as a tip that I got from another user, if you use two fingers and you just tap and slide down, it opens up your edit window immediately. Did you know that? I only just learned that and I've been using GarageBand for years. So uh, we can come in here, and we can just adjust the notes. 
so we can actually put it back in so these notes will actually match up with what we're playing originally, like so. You can see it's very easy to start getting yourself something going on here. Let's try a bit of more of a uh, funky lead part here by grabbing our violin. So we'll duplicate out again. We'll come in here to our strings once more. And this time we're going to go for the violin. And... Sounds amazing, right? No. So what I'm going to do is instead of messing about with this, because we're playing this kind of in a major scale, what we can use is the scale button. So if we tap on scale here, we can put this so that it's in the major, the major pentatonic, the major blues. Maybe the blues scale might work for something like this. No, it's probably going to be more the pentatonic because it's more of a standard. Let's just see if we can play something along with this, because you can see here it's instantly much easier to play when you can be right in there. You don't have to worry about being right on the uh, on the correct spot to be in tune, and uh, it does all of the work for you to get you into the right scale. So let's hit record and just uh, try something, shall we? Two, one, three, four. So that was okay, uh, but the pentatonic didn't quite work there. So we're going to have to do some mild editing here just to make sure that, because uh, it because it starts on a minor, that's where the pentatonic didn't really fit in there. So let's just play it back, and we'll just adjust a couple of these notes to create our melody. So, so I think that's the first one we need to change. That's better. Really only that one note. It's really that just that one note that was uh, in the minor, when it was coming from the minor into the major that didn't work with the pentatonic. So it's pretty simple to start building yourself out something here. Now we haven't used the, the autoplay very much, so why don't we see if we, can, if we can put a full string section in here underneath that we use autoplay for. So uh, what if we just go with autoplay number three? <laughs> That might be a little bit too intense. What about number two? Yeah, all, all a little bit on the intense side, aren't they? That one might be better. Let's try this one. See if this is going to fit in with what we've already done. Two, three, four. That's sort of coming together. <clears throat> now, we haven't done any sort of mixing yet, so we do need to do that. Let's pull out our thing <laughs> here, our volume slider, and we'll drop the volume of that overall one. We want the violin to come up a little bit, uh, maybe drop the volume down of some of these lower instruments, the cellos here, and uh, let's do a little bit of panning, shall we, as well. So uh, this first one here is... So that's our low. What we'll do is we'll uh, we'll pan these. We'll come in here. We'll pan these ones over to the right, and then we've got these pizzicato, which we'll put over here on the. So those on the left, those on the right, and we'll loop out these middle ones, and we'll leave that in the middle because that's kind of our bass sound. And then we've got uh, the. Actually, we'll, we'll grab that one. So we'll put this on the very far right and all this business over on the left. Is this going to be too left heavy? bad the you here for those that are really into your timing you'll notice that the timing is a little off now it can be a bit hit and miss here trying to use quantization for your timing but we'll give it a shot shall we so we'll go into our uh, quantization settings 
wrong, wrong spot. We'll go in here to the track settings and quantization. And um, see, because one, do, 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 do. it's probably a straight quantization, isn't it? So we'll just put maybe a 16th note quantization. Why don't we just try this? Let's see if 16th note quantization on all of these will just tidy and neaten them up a bit. Or the other option is it's going to sound like an absolute dog's breakfast. So let's, uh, let's see if quantization is going to help us out here. I reckon that's better. So it's just a little bit thin on the, uh, so because we've got that violin over on the right, I think we just need a complementary lead instrument. So we probably need a second violin. We'll duplicate this out and grab a second violin to go here on the left to finish off this piece. So, uh, and this time, why don't we, why don't I try and play on the actual violin? I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a go. I'm just gonna do a very simple violin sound here. Let's uh let's see if I can actually play on the violin itself. Uh, give me a, uh, give me give me give me hope. <laughs> now that sounded like when I was learning to play. So the answer is a resounding no, especially not with a mouse. And uh, while live, uh, it's not something that's gonna be a happening thing. So no. We can't do that. Uh, so we'll go back to our scale, but this time we'll just go to the regular major scale. All right, we'll just play along with something like this. Ready? Three, four. Yes, turn Pete's violin violin down a tad, would you? I know, right? That that was always the uh, <laughs> that was the thing. Uh, did anyone play in bands where you just almost pretended to play or played so softly, you're like, no one will hear me if I do it well or if I do it badly? And I'm like, what if we? There was a whole band full of people that were playing like that. <laughs> it wouldn't work out so well, would it? All right, so we wanted to balance this. So we got that one on the right. Uh, oh, do we have these two violins? I want one on the right, one on the left. So we'll put this one here over on the left. And now we should have a bit more of a balanced kind of full string sound. Let's uh, take a listen. I think that's actually not too bad. I think this is something that you could build out with a few different sounds and things in there. The, the one final tip that I wanted to show you here, let's just go back to the strings and make sure we've shown everything. So just to, to recap, you got your chords mode, you got your notes mode, you can select which you are and aren't using up the top there. If you want to have some nice legato, you can do that. If you want to get a pluck, you can do that. You can turn your autoplay on and of course have your autoplay sounds, you can use the notes mode. So you can choose which one you want and you can uh, tap. And the other thing is that you can tap and hold over here on this one here and you'll get a pluck sound. The one thing I didn't show you is that while this mode is engaged, you can actually also do some gentle bowing. So just tap and hold and you'll see there where it's engaged. And then as you move up and down, you can actually get that there. You've got your scale button here, so you can go to your different scales, so you don't need to know all of your different notes here, which is a relief for people like me on the uh, strings. And the one final thing I'm going to show you with strings is if all of that's too hard, if you're like, Pete, I don't want to mess around with that interface, I just want to use my keyboard. Well, you sort of can. You sort of can use the keyboard. So if we hit plus here, and instead of strings, we go over to your keyboard, uh, like this one, then we can go to the more sounds button here. And if you go all the way back to the start and go to other, and then what you'll notice here is you don't have individual string instruments, but you've got pizzicato, staccato, and sustained strings. So if we select pizzicato, for instance, we've now got... So you've got uh, the option to do that. You can go into chords mode here, so you can... Oh. And we do have autoplay once again. And you can uh, so 
So this one does have the multiple autoplays. There, that's cool. I didn't. So it's it's in this one that you can actually have the multiple auto plays that you have there. So you've got your staccato strings, which are just a slightly different kind. And then you've got your uh, sustain, which are more of your legato. Which is a good sound to have. And again, in these ones, you do have your own attack and release. So you can get a lot closer. But they can sound a little unnatural if you've got your uh, release too low. So you might you might want to add a little release there where you can do that. So uh, that is strings.